you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Well, my lovelies, here we are on our new podcast, Cafecito, and I wanted to get into a conversation about manifestations. Now, if you're new, get your coffee, get your tea, get your wine, whatever it is that you prefer, take a seat and let's have a conversation. Now, one of the things that I often get asked when it comes to manifestations is the difficulty that people have when trying to manifest something. And if this is a new concept for you or it's something that you just barely began tapping into, um, there's going to be a lot of resistance, not necessarily on your conscious level, but more on a subconscious level. And it has everything to do with how we are uh, conditioned, you know, and it, it begins at a very, very young age in our early childhood. Now, what people often misconstrue, or I should say mis misunderstand is that we as adults, our personality is something that we are so attached to, right? And our ego uh, makes us believe or wants Um, but on, on the grander scale of things, a lot of your personality comes from your childhood conditioning, has a lot to do with your fears, has a lot to do with, um, your limiting beliefs, or I should say your self-limiting beliefs. And this is something that is very complex. Uh, a lot of our defense mechanisms, a lot of how we react, even on an emotional level to certain things, has a lot to do with our conditioning, how we were taught, how we were raised. Um, and every single person obviously has a very different experience when growing up. Uh, a lot of people will have, you know, different dynamics in the family or in the family household. So when we start to get into manifestation, think of it as you are in a vehicle and you're moving forward, right? You're driving and you're trying to get to point A, or I should say you're trying to get from point A to point B. And the only way you can actually start the car, so to speak, <laughs> um, in a metaphorical way, sense anyways, the only way you can get the car to start is to believe that you're capable of turning on that car. So think of it, think of it as if I was to tell you, if you get into that car and you're able to start it with your mind, then you'll be able to manifest your wildest dreams. Think of the biggest dream you've ever had. Think of what your heart's true desire is. You'll be able to attain that if you're able to start the car with your mind. Now, everyone is going to be willing, right, to jump at the opportunity to actually try to make that happen. But how many of us are actually equipped to be able to tap into our divinity, tap into our true power and be able to start it? The likelihood of that happening is very slim to none. So what am I trying to say? Am I trying to say that you're not capable of doing that? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is that you're only going to be able to tap into what you believe you're capable of doing. Now think of this as if throughout your whole life, you've been the type that everyone in your family or everyone in your friends or in your friend group or your social setting, they make it a joke, right? Because I've seen that. I've seen that. I've experienced it not only in my family, but I've experienced that with other people and with clients. You go about telling someone because they are not as quick to learn as you are or because they are not as capable of learning 
at a quicker rate than perhaps the normal person. And we're quick to tell them, oh, you're so silly. Oh, you're so stupid. Oh, you're so dumb, right? And dumb is something that we throw around often. And like I said, it's it's not something that I've seen just in my family, but I've seen it with other people. I've seen it with friends that, you know, you're around their family and you see how they talk to them. And saying you're dumb is not such a harmful, or you would think it's not such a harmful or hurtful thing to say, because we often say that, even myself, when I'm annoyed. Um, but if you're the type of person that continuously keeps hearing that, as you continue to grow, you start to believe that to be your truth. And then that becomes your reality. And then you learn very, very slow. Or when you're about to do something or someone's trying to encourage you to do something, they're like, but I wouldn't be able to do that because I'm dumb. Or they'll even make it a habit, right, of making that statement something casual. It's almost like their defense mechanism kicks in and they want to own that so that they don't look dumb to, to people around or, or those that hear other people tell them or call them those type of things. And I've seen it. You know, I, I have someone that I've known for a very long time that they would joke around, you know, her family would joke around and, oh, you're so dumb, you're so dumb, where it got to a point where whatever we're having a conversation and she wouldn't understand something, she'll be like, what do you mean? Can you explain it? Because I know, I know I'm dumb. So she started as a defense mechanism. And then what happens is that you start to believe what they're telling you and you start to make that your reality. And the moment you start making that your reality, everything is going to unfold that leads you to believe, to continue believing that that's true. So what I'm saying is the metaphor of the car is not that you're not capable of doing it, but you have to be equipped to be able to manifest in the easiest and most simplistic way possible. And to do that, it takes effort. It takes time. How long has it been? since you were a child and you started to be conditioned by your surroundings, by your circumstances, by um, association, by people around you, it's taking you a lifetime. So to be able to learn to manifest, it's actually an art. And in the practice, in witchcraft, it's something that we learn to tap into much more before we begin to do any type of spell work. Because you have to be able to tap into that type of energy. If you know, if you light a candle and you say a chant, but you don't, let's say you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily focused. Let's say you don't know absolutely nothing about spell work or witchcraft, right? But if I tell you, if you light this candle and you chant this specific chant, it's going to render you whatever it is that you're wanting to manifest, whatever it is that you're trying to experience. The likelihood of people that actually know the practice or that, you know, do spell work, of them manifesting that is going to be very quick. For those that are not equipped or perhaps don't know about energies or perhaps don't know exactly why they're doing it, the motivation behind it are probably not going to experience any changes. But then you have someone that is a true believer, meaning someone that truly believes in themselves, someone that knows their true power. Someone that understands by the simple fact that we are a living, breathing human, right? And our superpower is our spirituality. It is our energy. That is our superpower. 
because energy can never be broken. Energy can never be killed. It can never be destroyed. Whether you're on the low vibration or the high vibration, well, that determines the outcome, right? But let's say that you are tapping into your highest energy, that you are aligned, that you believe in yourself, that you feel empowered, and that you have faith. And what is faith? Faith is having a belief so powerful that you don't need outside circumstances or outside things to show or prove to you that it's real. It's something you feel within you. You take that person and they light that candle, I guarantee you within minutes, it'll start to unfold whatever it is that they're trying to manifest. Now, even someone that's not in the practice, even someone that doesn't know absolutely nothing about witchcraft or spell work, someone that doesn't know absolutely nothing about energy or alchemy, anything, but they believe, they have faith, they chant, the moment they're chanting those words, they are owning those words. Power is coming out of their mouth they will experience that manifestation, that outcome. So what I'm trying to say here is that when we talk about manifestations, manifestation is something that anyone, absolutely anyone can make happen. It is your birthright. It is something that within you is already intertwined and connected to the universe because you are the universe. There's a saying in the practice, as within, so without. Why do you think that is? That is because everything that the cosmos is, everything that the universe is, you are a part of. The universe is within you. Though you think it's separate from you, but the universe is within you. You are the universe. You are energy in motion. So when we speak about manifestations, this is something that, you know, when I work one on one with my clients, it's a conversation that I really go deep into because it's easy for us to go, you know, on social media or go to different platforms to hear people. Tell if someone's telling you how to do something and they're not explaining how it works or they're not explaining what goes behind it to actually achieve what you're trying to achieve, then you're never going to really, you're always going to find some type of disconnect. And much of you guys that have been following me for a while, those of you guys that have, were following the tarot lessons, you know, I'll give you that as an example. A lot of the times people think that the tarot, right, that each single card is very separate from the rest, that they are very different. And there is no such thing as separation in anything in life. <clears throat> There's nothing that is separation. And much like the tarot lessons, I spoke a lot about that, about, you know, understanding it is crucial and very important to understand what each card represents which is why in the beginning stages, you must first learn what each card represents. But then when you understand that concept, you must go back and understand the cards that come before and after. Why? Because they are all intertwined. They are all connected. It's the same thing with us. There is no separation from us to the universe or from the universe to us, because they, it is within us. It is who we are. It is your birthright to be able to experience life as you desire. Now, that's another concept that, you know, many of us are very unfamiliar with. It's a very unfamiliar territory for those that have experienced a lot of trauma in their life. For those that have experienced nothing but difficulty and, and strife and, you know, limiting beliefs and 
to them, you know, if you sit down and have a conversation with them, it's like telling them, well, did you know that everything you've ever experienced is because you've chosen to experience that? You know, they probably want to punch you in the face. <laughs> Why? Because obviously we are, when you're born, and that too has a purpose, but we are when we are born into a family dynamic, let's say it's the most toxic in the whole world, you're not going to want to hear someone tell you, well, you chose everything that you've experienced up until now, even the horrible things. That's That makes no sense, right? They would tell you. How can I, a good person, have experienced such horrendous experiences? And of course, you don't have control over people or those around you. You cannot force them to behave. You cannot force them to treat you well. And as a child, you could have experienced certain traumas that obviously had absolutely nothing to do with your control. But the moving forward from that, the overcoming that, it still comes down to what you decide because it has all to do with how we react to situations and circumstances. People that have experienced a lot of traumas in their life become very guarded, become very tainted. Some may form many shadow aspects because they're just trying to protect themselves. But the understanding of the power that you truly have will completely change your life and this. We have control over how we react and it's based on emotion. And emotion is the number one key when it comes to manifestations. You cannot experience, let's say you're trying to find Let's say you're trying to get into a specific job, a specific profession. You've gone above and beyond and all you have experienced is people passing you by or giving the opportunities to other people. So you're frustrated, right? And you're trying to manifest getting that position. You cannot... You cannot experience getting that position when your energy is frustration, when your energy is even helplessness sometimes. You cannot experience that. You have to align yourself to the feeling of it. And this is where imagination, which is the greatest gift that you know our God and Goddess ever gave to us, because through your imagination, are you able to get yourself into that position? Well, you say, Pinky, how can I do that? You start to fantasize what it is or how it feels to have that position. Are you embodying that position? Are you embodying being at the greatest of your highest vibration. If you're wanting to get a very, let's say a very high paying job, uh, a position that has authority and you're frustrated because people keep passing you by or they keep giving positions to other people and not giving you the opportunity. So you're there soaking and they're complaining about how people are passing you by, about how people are so frustrating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's not going to make you stand out. If anything, people are going to be repelled by your energy. Well, how do you tap into that? You start to shift your way of thinking. Of course, you're noticing, you know, people, you know, going above and beyond to try to, let's just say, for example, trying to kiss ass to the superiors so that they can get that position. And it irks you and it triggers you. 
instead of you thinking, well, there they are kissing ass and I'm over here doing what I have to do and no one's noticing, instead of you doing that, tap into the energy of, well, that other person has nothing to bring to the table other than kissing ass, other than being a yes man. Which means that at some point in time, they're going to have to make a decision or they're going to be put in a position where they can no longer say be a yes man. They have to actually think for themselves. And that's going to put them in a position of uncomfortability because they're not used to that. So I'm over here on my side doing what I have to do. And they will notice. You have to believe in yourself. Like I said, you have to embody that position. If it's a position of power, are you dressing up for the situation? Are you dressing up to, you, you can't go into work, you know, looking like a bum, expecting to be seen or noticed for a management position. If you're the type of person that is just going in and you just want to clock in and clock out, but you also expect them to give you a higher position, are you doing a little bit more than you should? And if you're not, because you've convinced yourself that that's not going to help you stand out, well, you're kind of keeping yourself from being able to progress. I'll give you guys an example. When people come to me and they tell me that they are, you know, trying to manifest, like I said, that job or that perfect opportunity. And then they tell me, I've started to manifest certain things, but this opportunity showed up and it's not necessarily what I want. Why is that? Oh, it's because it's, it's a different, you know, different schedule than I thought or that I expected. And that's what turns them off. And it's like, okay, if you're manifesting, right? And you know exactly what it is that you want to experience. The universe is going to bring to you that experience. Sometimes, yes, we have to be much more clear. But if as an example, the shift is what's the uncomfortable part for you, how do you know that by you taking on that shift, it's not going to put you in alignment with the right people that are going to notice, that are going to see you, that you're going to shine. And then two months after that, you can get that high ranking position. Do you see what I'm saying? So, and it all comes down to intuition when it comes to manifestation. Now, I know that that's something that's thrown around often, right? But for those of you guys that don't really know about intuition, as an example, you're like, how the hell do I tap into that? Listen to your gut. If it feels good, if it feels exciting, if you're thrilled about it, do it. Whatever opportunity comes your way. If you feel like in the moment of it, your gut, you know, goes to your stomach or, or I should say goes to your feet, you feel that sinking feeling, then it's, it's a no. It's learning to pay attention to our GPS and our GPS is our intuition. Our GPS is our guiding system. And that's in every single aspect. It's not just in the aspect of manifestations. It's in every aspect of your life. The more you start to pay attention to that, the more you start to experience that your, you know, your intuition is never going to lead you astray.